and welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. We see additional massive coronal mass ejections, enough that I've had to put on put on my doomsday glasses. Although it's not doomsday yet, there are lots of people out here preventing such things. <laughs> so in any case, massive coronal mass ejections, and we see a bit of alt tech versus big tech going on. First thing we're going to do here on the Daily Space Weather video is look at the sun. And you can see where that coronal mass ejection is coming from in between the coronal hole and sunspot 2795. Also, I would note there's a new active region rising over here. Perhaps already a sunspot. We'll let you know by the end of the video. Let's take a look at Lagrange Point 5 to show you this massive coronal mass ejection. And, you know, I'm going to actually refresh all of these because we want to make sure we have the latest data and we are streaming live. So here's the stereo A coronagraph number two difference image. Here's me vanishing. So we see some missing data there, but we see a massive coronal mass ejection once again. And uh, if you're a regular viewer, you would recall that I've been keeping the coronal mass ejection watch alert on. As some of us are able to forecast these things. So in any case, here about fifteen twenty four yesterday. We see that letting loose. And there could be a very high speed component there, but it all looks like it will miss the Earth. So I'll also bring up the Lasco C3 here to show you whatever data we have. And there is, again, missing data. But we see a plume out to the west, and we see nothing on the east or the north or the south. So we see all the activity is apparently out here once again. And from Lagrange Point 5, you can have the view that, you know, since the Earth is off to the right from, from the, view, the viewpoint of Stereo A's coronagraph, you can have a coronal mass ejection which which misses well to the east or the west and look like it's in line with the earth. So here's uh, the radio flux, the 10.7 centimeter radio flux at 75. There's a one-year chart of that. Here's me <laughs> reappearing and checking the life of the stream. Thanks to our YouTube viewers, etc. Uh, we've got an announcement about an exclusive video which we'll save for a bit later. So yeah, there's the one-year chart of the radio flux, which is, for you new viewers, a proportional measurement of sunspot activity. It's proportional to sunspot activity. There you can see the two graphs, radio flux versus sunspot number. And we've been at 75 here. Perhaps we're looking for an uptick here as there is some activity rising in the southeast. So over here, you'll see a bright spot rising. But what's a lot more interesting is the coronal mass ejection. We've got a pretty good view of it. Let me just reload that as it was flickering. And we don't want the videos to cause any seizures. So you can see a little bit of activity associated in front of that coronal hole right there below my pointer. Again, that coronal mass ejection right around 8 o'clock. And we'll show you some more views here. Here's Helio Viewer. We've got it in 131 angstroms. And here's me. <whistles> vanishing. So no big solar flares associated with this once again. I mean, I say it all the time. We regularly see coronal mass ejections without any solar flares or, or even sunspots on the Earth-facing portion of the disk. There is indeed still some plasma up there around the North Pole. So this area up here. 
And let me just go back to the integrated space weather analysis site and bring up the regular corona graph here. Maybe we'll get the best image out of that. And that's a bunch of old crappy data there, folks. So that data is six hours old or something like that. So we'll just have to wait and hope that uh, that, that data shows up. Currently not there. Here's a close-up of the area in 304 angstroms. And you see there was a little bit of a prominence there. Here's 171. And we'll show you some more views like this at the end of the video. First, we've got to get through some data. And before that, we'll do a cosmology segment real quick. Today's Smash Lights may or may not be a separate video. Make sure you watch our Smash Hole of the Week segment when that comes out. We've announced when that comes out. We've announced what it will be. We've announced what it will be. And I'm now on an echo mode because I can't find the mute button. I'm now on an echo mode because I can't find the mute button. That's perfect. That's perfect. Does anybody see a mute button here? Are you kidding me? Holy crap. You are closed. And we are streaming live to Twitch. That was twitch.tv slash smash mash Make sure you follow us on Twitter also. <laughs> Twitter.com slash smash mash We are also on Gab and on Minds. Are you safe yet? Make sure you branch out into alt tech. <laughs> Have you noticed some issues with certain corporations? Yeah. Same here. Anyway, we've made a 300 bit shoot subscriber exclusive. Here's a clip from that. It's just been uploaded. It's fresh off the press. It's only got one thumbs up. Oh, it's still being processed. Son of a bit shoot. Bitshoot.com slash smash a mash. And let's talk cosmology. As cosmology is an important aspect of, well, really all sciences at this point. Everything is on the table as various branches of the hard sciences are in the process of being rewritten. It's why we bring up cosmology on the regs. Before we do so, let's thank our patrons. Thanks to our patrons. Please consider becoming a patron and funding our operation as our patrons are the main source of funding for the content. You could become a patron at patreon.com slash smash mash What you'll get, all kinds of different things. Patrons look for some uploads coming soon. Chandra has observed a very extraordinary magnetar. It's this one right here, J1818.0-1607. There it is in infrared light. It's right on the galactic plane. And it's also visible. You'll be able to find it on the Chandra also if you go to Aladdin Light. There it is on the Chandra. It's one of a very rare type of pulsars. Uh, a pulsar that's also a magnetar. And uh, let's just say it emits quite a significant magnetic field. I'm not going to read any ridiculous quotes about erasing credit cards from only one-sixth the distance of the moon. Oh, no. At only 40,000 miles, it could erase your credit card. And we need to know that because reasons. Now, I don't know if they talk about other very fast-moving pulsars. But if you viewed our cosmology segments... Now, this is on phys.org's Astronomy and Space section. Have you checked out our playlists? At youtube.com slash smash mash slash playlists, we've got various different playlists such as smashamash.org, which is just music or silence and images of the sun. There's also the Smash News Network and so on. Check out the cosmology segments. One of our cosmology segments actually features a neutron star right on the cover 
one that's traveling at uh, solar wind speeds at a speed of something like 200 kilometers per second, I want to say. So yeah, if you haven't checked out our cosmology segments, check those out. You can find all of our playlists at youtube.com slash smashomash slash playlists. Let's see if we can find that one here. There is a special presentation featuring Eugene Bagashov about the theories of everything. That's a pretty interesting one. Here it is. Neutron stars that travel at the speeds of comets. Were you aware? It's neutron star number... It's neutron star RXJ1856353754. Now that's a super interesting object. And again, you can find that in the cosmology segments. We'll be making another one soon about coronal holes. That one will feature a guest as well. And I don't know what we've got open there. Let's move on here. No need to roll any dice today. Today's featured object is J1818.0-1607, the Magnetar Pulsar. And that's today's cosmology segment. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. smash o -Mash. And let's get back to data. And drinking coffee with Coco and Cayenne while looking at the real-time solar wind. Which has been a bit variable here over the past four hours. We see a pretty low-density solar wind here, currently at around three protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed, 328 kilometers per second. The KP index, a measurement of global geomagnetism, has been at 1 for the past 9 hours. And the 9 hours before that was at 0. Let's take a look at the magnetosphere in graphical form, as modeled by the Space Weather Modeling Framework. By the way, interesting story yesterday about the way the magnetosphere is being altered by ultra-low frequency radio waves, creating a semi-permanent radio wave bubble around the planet. Who knew? Pretty crazy stuff. Anyway, there's four hours of the pressure, which is pretty nominal here. Next, we'll look at ground magnetic perturbations since we're living through a magnetic excursion. And we see some magnetic perturbations there around the South Pole mainly a little bit around the Canadian North Pole, less so the Siberian one. And what do we have next here? We don't see any big proton strikes. Here's a three-day chart on the GOES proton flux. There's the X-ray flux. And we brought up the seven-day here just to show you how low the X-ray flux has been. Here's the normal three-day chart. Not even a B-class flare there, just before midnight last night. There's the ghost magnetometer, and we're, we're continuing to see these sawtooth patterns in it, as we've forecasted. And it all has to do with the composition of the current sheet. We'll show you that next. As when the polarity changes, the magnetic field can change as well. So here is the top view ecliptic plane field plot. Earth is in the process of snapping into a South Pole current sheet. Did it already happen? It could have. This data is over three hours old. By tomorrow, expect to be in a South Pole current sheet. Here's the last image. Most likely already snapped across. And we'll see some fairly high magnetometer readings with the composition of the incoming current sheet. Here's a line of sight coronal hole field plot and uh, you're, you're looking at the coronal hole associated with that coronal mass ejection there rotating out into a setting mode there in the southwest. 
Looks like another one rotating in here in the southeast as well. It's also associated with the South Pole. Here's a magnetogram along with that same data and the polar fields, the poloidal solar polar fields. And then here's the uh, coronal magnetic field plot. The chaotic environment of the sun's atmosphere. Next, I'm looking at a sky chart. And it's about to get light here as I'm running very late. There you can see the ecliptic with the moon not so far off the horizon. In the constellation Libra. Here's a chart of the planets. There's where things will be in a week. As Frito-Lay begins to lose its stranglehold on the solar system, the triangle created between the, the Church of Moloch of Uranus and the Church of Satan, who've, been, who've taken over Jupiter in order to supply the Galactic Federation with organic non-GMO tortilla products. Also look for a brand of Trump tortilla products coming out, as he will be trying to appeal to the Galactic Federation as well. Next charging hazards, we don't see any. Here's the one-year chart of the electron flux. And we're at pretty low levels here. Here's the forecast model. And uh, I, I guess I agree. I don't know. The yellow diamonds are the observations, and the blue squares are the forecast. They've actually lowered their model here a little bit. I don't know. I'll just, I'll say I, I agree. I agree with their model. Here's the three-day electron flux chart. And uh, again, pretty low levels here, not even approaching 1,000 pulse flux units there shown by the red dotted line. Here's a diagram that we show daily. And let me once again check the life of the stream here. Thanks everybody who tuned in live or tuned in Memorex. Leave us a comment. Tell us what you thought. Or perhaps level a death threat. Just kidding. Don't level death threats. You'll get banned from YouTube. And we don't, we don't want you to be banned from YouTube now. Play, be, be nice. We won't censor you, so don't make a fool of yourself on the comments. We might berate you. Next, uh, looking at uh, layers of the atmosphere. And we show this daily to show folks where the F ionosphere layer is there on the right around 300 kilometers of altitude. Here's a visualization to about 12,000 miles of altitude where a GPS satellite will be located. And we see some anomalies here over Antarctica. And probably some minor ones over North America as well. I'll let it play through a second time. And you see some minor anomalies there over places like the Mid-Atlantic region. And I've documented massive GPS errors on my Instagram account. If you don't follow me there, check it out, Instagram.com slash smash on ash. So we show this one daily too because what you were looking at there is through the inner Van Allen belt. Hope that helps. Keep in mind that is in miles. The other diagram is in kilometers. So we don't see any... Uh, we don't see any proton strikes, and we don't see any evidence in terms of ionospheric absorption either. Let's look at a uh, visualization of the ionosphere. There's the previous day. And we see continued minor anomalies here in the southern hemisphere, staying pretty charged up at night, although it is summertime down there. So especially in the South Atlantic, we see some anomalies. Here's the latest image. We'll bring that up. It's from 1030 Universal Time. Which volcanoes are erupting, you ask? Well, you don't have to ask. I'll tell anyway. A Biko. It's producing a 9,000-foot plume of ash. Suenose Jima exploded. Flight level 040. A 4,000-foot ash plume. Langila now on the list. 16,000-foot ash plume there as it explodes at Papua New Guinea. Cinnabung. Unknown height volcanic ash cloud. Please don't pole vault the caldera. 
and don't do the Fosbury flop over Merapi. It's producing a 10,000-foot plume of ash, and if you can jump that high, you should be in a comic book somewhere. Decono's exploding as well. Flight level 070, it's producing a 7,000-foot ash plume. Please don't hang glide that caldera. And Popocatapetl, don't go over that one in a flight suit. Down in central Mexico, it's exploding, producing a 20,000-foot ash plume. And it could make for a bad day for you and your flight suit. I know they're pricey. Fuego's also been erupting. However, its emissions have dissipated. And Sabancaya is exploding. It's producing a 24,000-foot plume of ash. Please do not do the triple lindy over the caldera, or it can be very unhelpful for you and for the people who want you to not be consumed in a pyroclastic destruction catastrophism catastrophe of magmatic spike downs and you being spiked around and turned into part of the atmosphere. We don't want that. Don't become part of the atmosphere, viewers. And we see a swarm in earthquakes, as if we didn't have enough stuff to talk about. We see a swarm in earthquakes, such as this th this 5.2 in the Kerbadec Islands region north of New Zealand. And I don't know why I'm talking like Casey Kasem, but that was a deep quake at over 330 kilometers depth. Leave us a comment for a free prize, void where prohibited, which is everywhere. So a bunch of deep quakes here, uh, not just that one. Also, this 4.4 at Japan, this 5.1 at Indonesia. How about a 4.4 in the Banda Sea? A 3.8 in quite far inland there in Alaska. Under Denali. Another deep quake under Denali. What's up with that? Very close to the last one that we covered. How about them apples? Here's a deep quake in Russia. It's a significant deep quake event, folks. Here's another deep quake in Western South America. Here's another deep quake in Vanuatu, which came in about two hours later, one hour later, almost exactly an hour later, to the second to the minute, to the minute. Almost an hour to the minute. 50, I, I don't know, whatever. So two deep quakes. Here's an ultra shallow quake at Hawaii at an altitude of 1,500 meters above sea level. That one under Mauna Loa's caldera. One of the sub calderae of Mauna Loa on the uh, southwestern flank. at like 4,500 feet of altitude, folks. Yowzers. 1.5 kilometers above sea level, certainly magmatic in nature. What say you, viewer? If you could go spelunking in a volcano, would you do it? Deep quake in the Philippines. Deep quake in New Guinea. Deep quakes galore, folks. A 572-kilometer, 5.2-magnitude quake by Fiji. A deep quake in the Dominican Republic. A 3.9. And let's move on to the jet streams. Where were you where the jet streams blew over? Were you in a place getting exceptionally cold and strange weather? Were you vanishing and being... Dragged off to Oz. Here are the jets of the Eastern world. They are blowing backwards across the Western Pacific and Indian Oceans, east to west. Oh no, the Earth is going to start rotating the opposite direction because air is. Please leave a comment if you're a complete COVID idiot about the climate and you think that the climate can be measured by measuring the air. Just kidding, folks. Don't leave a comment if you're a complete COVID idiot. Or, or do. We don't mind. Anyway, the Earth's heat latency is actually in the oceans, not in the air. Only about 1% of Earth's heat latency is in the air. 
which means if you don't know the ocean temperature at 3 meters, 30 meters, and 300 meters in the middle of the Indian Ocean, you don't know the Earth's climate. Major lightning here off of the coast of the Outer Banks. Major lightning storm there. I'll bet there'll be some photographs online if you search. Here's a real-time lightning map, and there's still lightning kicking off. Check it out. Active storm out there. I think. I saw lightning strikes, I'm telling you. Hey, that's an awful nice ocean you got there. Be a shame if it had lightning strikes, eh? <laughs> hey, you the viewer, you and me, we're like the Pacino and the De Niro are doing space weather videos, eh? <laughs> Which one do you want to be? Do you want to be De Niro or... or do you want to be De Niro or Pacino, huh? And you have a Niagara with the viewer, huh? And you'll be a Pacino. Which, oh, which one do you want to be? <laughs> Here's a U.S. Doppler radar map. It's pretty uneventful. Here's a snow forecast. There's the Euro snow forecast until tomorrow. It doesn't look like a lot's going to happen. Although, Texas. Well, I'll be. Well, I'll be. Texas is getting snow again. A few inches. How about them apples? Here at the Smash News Network, we, we prefer to be objective, not have an agenda. Show you the information and then encourage you to comment. And remember, don't make a fool of yourself on the comments. You may be berated. We will not censor the comments. Unless you somehow break the law. Here's a cloud map. And man, oh man, look at the low clouds over the Gulf and the eastern seaboard. All of this region here, this whole area, coated in low clouds, which makes for colder days and warmer nights. Here's the water vapor map. And it looks like we're seeing some rapid cloud nucleation there. I know there's an area of strange, warm, and cold mixed water off the coast of Cape Cod. You can see some rapid cloud nucleation there right ahead of that high pressure zone under my pointer. It's funky. There you can see those eddies associated likely with evaporative processes. And since we've got bonus features, it's time for me to vanish, show you the final cuts of the sun that we have and get out of here as we've got to get the video uploaded so we can view with our viewers on YouTube. Since I'm not only a client, I'm also smash o -mash. And we're going to show you the high-res magnetogram to see if that rising active region is indeed a sunspot or not. Once it loads, there we go. So we see some magnetic activity down here as well. But the main spot I want you to look at is over there. And I see two a bit organized zones, two slightly organized zones there. And we'll see if we see any umbrae. I just refreshed this. And I'm going to say no. I don't yet see any umbrae. But that's pretty well organized, as you can see there. No dark spots yet. So those may not be sunspots. Also, don't forget to head to smashomash.com slash forum. You may learn something about coronavirus. And let's show these Helio Viewer movies once again here. Close things out with 304 angstroms. Thanks for tuning in to the Daily Space Weather, folks. Remember, stare at the sun. Don't drink, no matter how much the government drives you to drink. And if you do drink, don't drive. Welcome to the Neo-Renaissance. Visit our sites. Become a patron.
get involved, take a towel, throw it up into the air. When it comes down, brown, wash the towel. Brown goes into the ocean, get the brown from the air back into the ocean. A couple years, take some nets, get the ocean brown back into the air, recycle pollution. I've been your host, Dan, a.k.a. Smash-O-Mash, and we'll see you next time.